Hello, everybody. Terry Harden. Welcome to Terry TV. I haven't said that in a while, have I? Terry Harden, pop icon here, and Walt Disney's legendary Imagineer. Having been uh, done work in things like Ghostbusters, Men in Black, Captain EO, Country Bears, Google me. <laughs> or look at my credits at the front of the YouTube video, which just roll as I'm having a cup of tea. It's kind of fun to watch that. So uh, you can find out about me or just Google me. How are you today? Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. It's Monday. It's a beautiful day outside. If you are in many parts of the United States today, I'm going to warn you, uh, it's going to be a hot one and it's going to be a hot and slightly humid one. So the weather service warns you to stay safe and stay hydrated. Hence, hydration. In fact, here in Southern California, it's going to be so hot that the president of the Screen Actors Guild, of which I'm a member, has said no striking, no picketing today. In fact, I think they've pushed it all the way to Wednesday, no picketing. Um, so um, if you're set on picketing, um, you want to picket. I've been not well, so I want to picket as soon as I'm well. Support support my union any way I can. Uh, uh, wait. You know, you can do it on social media. You can talk to people on social media. Do it uh, electronically as much as best you can. And uh, uh, support the writers and the screen actors um, in their... Uh, in their fight to get uh, things right. Let me say that, their fight to get things right. If you have any questions about that, you're welcome to ask me in the comments. Many people who aren't the Screen Actors Guild or a screenwriter may be confused as to what we're actually fighting for. Now, I don't have all the answers, but I have some. Also, if you've watched the news and you've heard about uh, Burbank's Aleppo pine trees and were worried that Burbank was just going to come in with a bulldozer and kill all these trees and you have questions about forestry and the Burbank Aleppo tree pine incident, it's, it's great. Burbank has won the award for planting the most trees in their city and their community for something like 10 years in a row. So they're never going to do any, go in half cocked. They're actually one of the cities that thinks before they strike. They actually do wait three seconds before they go into an intersection. But today I'm going to talk about Bob Barker. Bob Barker, who, um, who honestly uh, uh, is a, a very interesting soul known to be the Price is Right guy for so long before he retired from that from, from that show. But in 1977, after seeing Star Wars for uh, 67 times in one week in the month of May and then leaving and, tour and doing a, a walking tour of a uh, backpacking tour of Europe at 19 years old, I came back and uh, found myself on The Price is Right. Now, I've told many of you before that I've never, um, I've never, uh, I, did, I don't even know if back in 1977 I owned a television, to be honest with you. And uh, I may have owned a television, but I don't think I did. And, um, and so, and I never watched game shows. If I was going to watch television, I watched a movie or I watched a series. I love series like My Favorite Martian, um, Mr. Ed, My Mother the Car, and then later ones like Andy Griffith, which uh, was always fun because I was a big Don Arts fan. Later series, I think I watched Bewitched. And I'm trying to think if there's, I watched Space 1999 and Star Trek, of course, the original Star Trek. I still watch the original Star Trek. But that was kind of, if, if, I, if I had TV or access to TV, I was watching stuff like that. Never News, um, Sherry Lewis would cross my path, a lot of uh, uh, Kukla, Fran, and Ollie. You know, these, these puppet shows, Jim Henson, of course, Muppets like crazy, uh, but not really game shows. So at that time, I was in college, I was illustrating, I was learning art, I was taking figure drawing classes, I was taking um, design classes at uh, LA Valley College, and I had a really dear friend, her name was Sue Thomas, and she drew like the old masters, you know, those beautiful drawings that you see maybe 
uh, Michelangelo do or um, Renoir do or Rembrandt do where they do like Rembrandt especially would do these large sketches of people. And it was sort of like black charcoal and then white and red Conti on a newsprint that sort of um, um, wrapping paper, that sort of uh, packing paper, color paper. They used to do them on these big sheets to kind of lay out what they wanted to paint later or draw later or whatever. And my friend, when we were, in um, figure drawing class, she that she drew just like just like these people. I remember trying to pay attention and do my own drawing when I would just be sitting next to her and be blown away by her drawing. Anyway, Susan had a had a had an auntie and a sister who loved The Price Is Right. When I returned from my walking tour in Europe, uh, they had gotten tickets to The Price Is Right and. No way to get to CBS Studios in downtown Los Angeles. I'll, you know, if you submit to tickets to these game throw game game shows to be in the studio audience, sometimes it can take weeks or months for you to get the tickets. They had asked for four tickets, um, hoping that uh, Susan's uncle could drive them in, but alas, he could not. So I got my car. I had a 1969 Cougar with the lights, sequential lights have always been a weakness of mine is sequential lights. I now have a Mustang 19, I mean a 2012 Mustang that has the sequential lights. I just love the sequential lights. I don't know why that excites me, but so do stairs, uh, short stairs. I don't know. It's weird. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I had this car. It was a red car. It had license plates called Vader one. If I find, I still have those plates. So I'll show them to you sometime. But uh, at this point, they said Vader one, and my car had a cassette player. If you don't know what a cassette is, Google it. And uh, um, it was breathing. It was all Darth Vader breathing. So you could pull up next to me and hear the car breathe. Because <sighs> Vader was my favorite character in Star Wars. I absolutely loved Darth Vader. So I um, thought he was a really cool, cool villain. So I'm, I'm going to take uh, these people to see Price is Right. They call me up and they say, please, Terry, please. We we really want to be a part of the show. We've been waiting for these tickets a long time. And so I took a book with me. I was dressed in some overalls that I had created that were all hand painted. I do that a lot. Okay. I design clothing often. And if I can't design it, I illustrate it. You know, can't seem to keep white surfaces white. Oh, well, go figure. And uh, I had illustrated this pair of overalls and then I had buttons going down each strap and the buttons were Chewbacca uh, in a galaxy far, far away. May the force be with you, et cetera, et cetera. Star Wars stuff, all Star Wars stuff. Obsessed, very much like you and your mouse ear collection out there if you're Disney folks or your uh, football collection if you're football people, uh, your hockey collection if you're hockey people, your baseball card collection, whatever it is, that you are obsessed with, no, I have a Star Wars obsession. I don't really have it so much now, but back then when I was 19, completely and totally died in the wool, Star Wars person. So we pull into CBS Studios down, um, down in downtown Los Angeles and my car is breathing, whatnot. They're getting the giggle out of it. And uh, I say, hey guys, have a good time. I'm going to sit here and read my book. And they said, no, you're not. You're going to come. You're going to, you're going to sit in the audience with us. And I was like, I don't really need to. That's so kind of you, but not necessary, blah, blah, blah. Well, long story short, they invited me. Now, what you may or may not know about, about um, game shows like The Price is Right, and this is all 1977, so I cannot tell you, but at the time of Bob Barker, being the kingpin of Price is Right, uh, they would line you up 400 people, 100 rows, four people each. You follow me? So outside of CBS Studios, they would arrange you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, et cetera, et cetera, all the way back for 100 rows. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, we stood there waiting to go inside the auditorium slash theater where they filmed the prices right. And a man, um, uh, uh, people would walk through these lines and 
talk to people. I didn't know who they were. Again, I've never really watched the show, maybe caught it a little bit while I'm changing the channel. But uh, I have to be honest, it really wasn't my stop point. Um, but I'm standing with my friends and I've got, I'm decked out with these buttons and my illustrated overalls. And uh, I don't even know if YouTube has it, but uh, it was 1977. And I think around October 7th, I was on. Isn't it funny how you remember some things, but you don't remember where you put your keys? I remember where I put my keys because I put it in the same place. Maybe I should say, don't remember where I put my phone. That's more like, that's more, more appropriate statement. But the point is, is that I do remember that. And uh, uh, the man stepped in front of me and the man said, uh, Star Wars, wow, you seem to be a big fan. I said, yes, I've seen it 67 times. And when you think that was the first week it was out, because the rest of the time I've been in Europe backpacking and it doesn't release until this month, um, that's pretty good. And uh, he said, wow, you must really know the movie. So he asked me a question, you know, um, um, who, you must know the lines really well. I said, yeah, I do. I do. And he said, okay, who said this? She may not look like much, but she's got it where it counts. Well, that's an easy one. I think if you've only seen Star Wars once or twice, you would know the answer to this one. But the answer is, of course, Han Solo talking about his Millennium Falcon. I then turned to him and said, who said this? Buta tuta solo. And he was like, what? And I said, uh, go ahead, look it up. Let me know what your answer is. Anyway, there was a woman on my right side. So there was a woman on my right side, myself, my two friends, and the aunt in the next row, okay? The woman standing to my right said, uh, the woman standing to my right said, I, I can't believe it. Every time I've gone on this show, the person to my left gets chosen. And I said, chosen for what? And she said, chosen. And I said, well, if that's the case, you need to be at the opposite end of this line. <laughs> then everybody is to your right. She went, <laughs> anyway, she was correct. We went and sat in the auditorium and I was third called. Terry Harden, come on down. I was so shocked. I have to be honest with you. Okay, this is nobody. Thank you. As I've said before, forgive the interruption by the ringtone. I'm waiting to hear from my father's doctors. I will cut this abruptly short if my father's doctors call. So be ready. Um, but anyway, uh, I was chosen. Terry Harden, you're the next contestant on The Price is Right. And down I came and uh, stood in front of the audience and the thing I remember with Bob Barker, so I won't give you everything. I'm going to write about it later. Um, Bob Barker, uh, I picked a, I, I matched a price on a particular product, and that meant I won $100. I had no idea what it meant. Things going, woo, 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 and everybody in the audience screaming and yelling, and I had no idea. I had this face like, what? Terry, you're it. Come on up. And I went up. And Bob Barker played this little game with me, telling me to reach in his hip pocket to find the $100 bills and then pr produced it from his vest pocket. Ha, ha, ha. And I looked at him like he had three heads. Then later, when I was supposed to spin the big wheel, he said, my producer tells me you've seen Star Wars 67 times. And I said, yeah, in a week, I saw it 67 times. And uh, we chatted about that. And then after the show was over, and I did win a few prizes, but I didn't win the big prize, uh, we had a talk. So Bob Barker, a lovely guy, very gregarious, very sweet, very calming. He makes every guest, feel, he made every guest feel comfortable. And uh, what a voice he had. So I thought I, you might like that little story. I know I'm giving you the cliff notes. That's because I'll probably write about it later. Many of you have heard it before. So why bore you today? But uh, that was the story I wanted to talk about. And um, it gave me a thought. It made me It made me think when I saw that he had, he had just about hit 100 years old. But uh, he lived a, a long and fruitful life that I hope uh, I will... I will say I venture to do the same. I would like to be, uh, I'd like to live to 150 simply because I think being old and wrinkly would be really cool. I don't know. It's, you know, I told you I was different. I was odd. I was different. 
Different, different. I was different. So did you go do cinema day? Did you enjoy it? Was it wonderful? Did you see five movies, four movies, just a movie or two? But did you love it that it only cost four dollars? Feel free to let me know if you enjoyed it. Yesterday, what I did was uh, learn about something that I did a long time ago as a child. I learned a little bit about ice skating in the 21st century. Um, I skated for years. Uh, I've, I've been skating, but uh, I've always used the skates that I used when in the in the when I first learned. Um, I bought them when my feet stopped growing, and then I had them stretched every year. And now um, I pulled them out to go skating not too long ago, and the tongue just cracked apart. They are Spiteri boots. You may, if you skate, you may remember that name as uh, Rydell or Riedel it was. Apparently those skates are, those two were the two names in skating when I was ice skating. And now both names are kind of meh in the industry, which you may be interested to know, or maybe not because this has nothing to do with Disney. But uh, um Years ago, when I was Imagineer, I played an ice fairy from, uh, we did a, um, we did a costume contest in Imagineering back in the day, Imagineering, all of Disney would shut down during Halloween. And we had these beautiful costume contests. And I made this outfit of an ice fairy with the help of my friend, Lynette, and I could change my shoulder position and my wings that I wore on my back would shift as I skated through the halls on rollerblades. It was quite a sight to see, I will tell you. And um, um, the rollerblades were fantastic. So my ice skating helped with my rollerblading and uh, and I loved it. So um, I wanted to, uh, I was invited to possibly, you know, check out the new rink, the new old rink at the Pickwick Gardens. You remember the Pickwick Gardens? And you guys remember the Pickwick Gardens? We lost the bowling alley. Yesterday was the last day for the bowling alley, it's going to be demolished and apartment buildings are going up. It's terribly heartbreaking. Apparently you can buy the bowling pins if you want to. And uh, that was a heartbreaker. But uh, the LA Kings have now uh, become a part of the ice rink. They were able to preserve the ice rink and the ice rink is still um, there on Riverside Drive just off of Maine. But uh, it's a different world. It's such a different world. The skates are different. The, the cut of the boot is different. They've learned a lot about it. Um, it was quite an education yesterday as I learned about the new skates. Wait for it. The Jackson boot. <laughs> wow. Can you believe it? My merry name is Jackson and the skates, the one of the best skates on the market is the Jackson boot. Wow. Dun, 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 dun. That was a surprise. There's also a pair of boots. I used to always buy the blades separate from the boot because you could get different grades of, of skate blade, figure skating blade, based on your um, expertise. They don't do that much anymore. Uh, if they do, the skates cost, uh, blade and skate is over $1,000. Whoa! So, yeah, I'm sure that has to do with a lot with Olympians. A lot of the things that Olympic level skaters use probably are well over a thousand dollars um many of them do custom costumes i used to do costumes for them for the olympics in fact lynette and i made a costume for some pair of a pair of ice uh pair skaters figure skaters back in 1988 i think it was lynette may have to correct me but uh it wasn't their costumes that won but they won third they won a bronze medal and they stood there in our costumes for everyone to see all over the world. So, yep, I've been busy. I've done a lot of stuff. Yes, sir. -y. So there you go. Let's see what y'all been up to. Um, let me not keep you, but wow, you know, lots of things when you think about it, your mind will think about this and think about that. And I love learning about stuff. I just do. I just think it's fun to learn about stuff. So it's interesting how it all pops up. Good morning, Jamie. Thanks for popping over here. Crumpet Puppet Troop. How y'all doing today? They say, hi, Terry. Jamie says, 94 here in Reno. Yeah. And what time is it? What time is it in Reno? 10 o'clock. That's pretty hot. Yeah. And, and even though we're going to be very hot here and in Reno, the Central, Central America states are really hitting those high numbers. So uh, if you happen to be watching and you're in one of those, 
take it easy. Be careful. Hydrate and stay cool as best you can, okay? Boggles my mind because I used to think I was one of the hotter areas unless you were in Texas or Florida. But to see these middle ones, I never really thought of them of getting the, those hellacious three-digit heat heights. But we're warned today that many of the United States is going to be struggling with that. So be careful. Hey, Terry, did you work on the Muppets at Walt Disney World, uh, Muppets at Walt Disney World special? And because I just saw some behind the scenes footage recently, I think I saw you in it. Maybe, you know, because uh, first of all, the Muppets retain all of their footage. And second of all, uh, it's hard to say when things were shot versus when things were done. And I did do one, two or three Muppet things with under the Disney brand, but I haven't lately. And the reason I haven't lately is anybody's guess. But that's, oh, this is this person driving me crazy again. Let me just do it again. Leave a message if you want to. Um, it's not my dad's doctors. Yay. Uh, but anyway, um, the Muppets under the Disney brand will sometimes call me, but sometimes not. And honestly, I got to be honest with you. I would love to be a part of the Muppets should they ask me. Uh, but not, not heartbroken, not heartbroken when they don't and, um, love to see them. Uh, anytime I get to see the Muppets, I'd love to see the Muppets. I was very, very much involved in the show dinosaurs. You may remember, uh, not the mama, not the mama, not the mama, and got to do a lot of characters outside of baby Sinclair, of which it was a major part, baby's arms, which was a real honor and a privilege. And I love doing it. And I was there for four and a half out of the five years. So it was really a great opportunity. Loved every minute of it. And then I did Muppet mini classics with Frank Oz. And uh, uh, yeah, with Frank Oz, Jim Henson had just passed. But Frank Oz was still still uh, there. And uh, um, many, Jerry was there. And uh, many of the Muppets, original Muppets were there. So it was a great fun to be a part with them. And then later on, did a lot, I did lots and lots of... of uh, and then their latest thing, what's it? Muppets Live or Muppets Tonight, the one that was shot at the Disney Studios. I did a lot of background for that. Thank you, Bruce Lenoyle. And uh, it was great fun. So, so I've had quite a career. If you Google me, there's a lot. There's a lot that I did. So I have nothing to be sad about. I really had a, I really have had and continue to have a great career in many levels. So uh, still audition quite a bit when possible. As you know, right now there's a actor strike. So I'm not auditioning for movies and TV, but I do audition for commercials often. So uh, pretty, pretty nice, pretty cool. Um, <laughs> I don't know who this is. Uh oh, and this is scam likely. So I'm getting lucky. I'm just getting all kinds of not my dad's doctor's calls. So forgive me for keep continuing to look every time it rings, but that's why I'm doing it. But uh, uh, I'm very blessed, very very happy. Um, I'm very busy as an artist and a performer. So, um, and then I do these. I do these. I do these Mondays and Fridays. Sometimes I do flashback Friday because uh, I'm looking to do more pre-recorded stuff for this channel. I've learned from experts who do YouTube that the pre-record is where it's at. So I'll do more of those as we move on. But right now I've just got so much going on. I want to keep to this little Monday, Friday thing and I'll do more as time permits. Yeah. But there you go. That's kind of, that's kind of my long answer to the short Muppet question. <laughs> Good morning, afternoon. All overcast and only 79 today in New York City, so I imagine picketing here is okay. I'll bet your bottom dollar it is. I would say yes. Is it not sticky in New York City, Joe? It's not humid. You know, August usually means high humidity for most places in the United States, which is a reason for me to not go out. Not a fan of humidity, but Good for you for picketing if the weather permits, because uh, the more solidarity, the better, right? Yes, yes. Good for you guys who are doing it in sta in states where it's not too desperately hot. Uh, the uh, president, Fran Drescher, and her 
team decided that it was better, that people were better safe than sorry and not be picketing in this high heat. So we're going to pick it up again on Wednesday or Thursday, I believe. Uh, Crumpet Puppet Troop, I'm taking vacation tomorrow. My friend is taking me to see a Canadian puppetry exhibit that's open until next week. I wonder if B.B. Beagle will be there. Have you heard of B.B. Beagle? B.B. Beagle was a Canadian show I did when I was 20, in my 20s. Let me say in my 20s for Hanna-Barbera. Yeah, um, um, the Muppet Show had just decided to stop in London and many, many um, companies over here in America were trying to hitch their tail to that Muppet comment. Muppet Commit. So they uh, so they did a show called BB Beagle. And if you can find BB Beagle, you will laugh because you know the, the Muppet song that they sang? Boom, 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 that one. Well, then watch BB Beagle and see how they have changed it by 15%. It's quite adorable. I remember seeing it and just giving me a giggle. But it was based on the same uh, map or criteria as the Muppet movie done here in Canada, not here in Canada, but done in Canada. And, uh, it was interviewing actors like the Muppet show did Jim Henson's Muppet show. And, uh, they would come on and they would be opposite characters like BB Beagle. But if you can find it, it's, it's a show that I did my very, very first, uh, commercial show. I had a star on the door. I absolutely loved it. And I got to work with, um, from laughing. I think he was the one that was the Nazi in the laughing in the laughing show way, way back when. Anyway, he had a shirt that was one quarter and he gave it to me and autographed the back and uh, I wore it till it was threadbare. I loved it so much. Um, and I had a star on the door, which really touched me with my name on it. It was cool. It was my very, very first television puppetry experience, BB Beagle for Hanna-Barbera. Google it. You might find a clip or two, but see if you can find the song. And if I can find the song, I'll attach it in my in my um, playlists with my Foster Farms chicken commercials, which is something else I'm very proud of doing. But I'm very blessed. I, I've had a, I, I continue to have an enlightening career, and that's because I go through doors of opportunity and then worry about what, what am I going to do with them later. Yeah, I just jump. Yeah, I still do it. Still do it at my age. You know, I'll figure it out on the way down. <laughs> it floats me up. So it's always good. Good advice for you guys is that if you think you want to do it, do it. Worry about it after. Walk through that door because that door closes very quickly, that door of opportunity. And once you're on the other side, I talk about how many Imagineers will tell you that Walt stretched them when Walt was alive and working on Disneyland, many of the legends will tell you that Walt would have a conversation with you and say, I need a fill in this blank. And you would be standing there as an Imagineer and go, well, how do you suggest we do this, sir? And he goes, you got this. Tap, tap, tap on your shoulder. And off he went. And there you were standing there not wanting to disappoint Walt Disney. And so you said, I guess I got to figure this out. And, uh, and you did. I never had the pleasure of working directly with Walt Disney. Um, he was gone before I was even hired. But I will tell you that that same attitude when I was an Imagineer in-house is the same attitude that uh, I had when I was there too. As I just didn't, I wanted the Disney brand to really be that, that which, that crown, that jewel in the crown of amusement parks and films and stuff. I didn't want to be the one to take it down. Nowadays, I don't know if there's anyone who feels that way. Well, yes, I do. Tony Baxter feels that way. Bob Gurr feels that way. Uh, Willie Ito feels that way. And most Disney legends feel that way. But the company, eh, what's up, dog, with that? You know, they're doing a lot of things that you, you question. You're like, why? You know, like we talked about on Friday, uh, this new Snow White, what is the point of even doing it? And I per personally feel that that is a, a black mark against the company and it's time to just not do that movie. Um, that would be, you know, eh, shelve it, you know, it's a good idea to shelve it. Yep. That, that, that's what I think. I think you need to cut your losses and shelve that movie because I, I think it, it's it's not been represented well by its lead actress. 
You know, Rachel bad mouthing the original Snow White. Seriously, I I've never known companies that appreciate you dissing their brand and then still hiring you and still putting the movie through, putting putting the product through. If all you're going to do is bad mouth uh, the company, I mean, you know, why, why? I question the company. I mean, you 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 can decide whether I'm bad mouthing or not, but I question what they're. I question your thought process, and I always try. I hope I do. I hope you agree with this. Um, is I always try to offer a solution as well. I think if Disney just asked you guys, a lot of their problems would fade away because you all out there who love Disney want the best for the company. So why not just ask you? You know, hey. What do you want to see? We want to be creative. What do you suggest? I Disney had an advisory committee. I've said this before. Walt had an advisory committee. If Walt can have an advisory committee of you guys, why not Bob? Not why not Bob Iger and the team Disney? It's not a show of weakness. It's a show of leadership and strength, my opinion. And all of that came from. Crumpet puppet troop saying they're taking a vacation and they're seeing a Canadian puppetry <laughs> exhibit. Can you imagine? See where my mind goes, guys? Uh, most people don't know this, but Bob Barker was part Lakota and was very proud of that fact. You know, Joe, I remember this. I remember this. Now that you say this, I absolutely remember that. And I remember him talking a little bit about that. So thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Yeah, you might not be able to see him like at first looking at him because your mind is racing about what price is going through your head. It's usually the first time you really get to meet Bob Barker. You're trying to spin the big wheel. But uh, but afterwards, in between, you get to sit down and chat sometimes. And I was fortunate enough to chat with him about my uh, fascination with Star Wars. And he chatted with me about some of the fascinations that he enjoyed. So, Joe, absolutely. Great to have you back and chatting with us, Joe, by the way. Jamie says, my parents went to TPIR, the Price is Right, taping when I was little in the early 80s. Yes, isn't it lovely to hear somebody talk about they were little in the 1980s if you're if you're someone who was 19 in 1977? It's kind of cool. Nah, some people don't like it. I like it. Uh, they didn't make it on TV, though, but I remember watching my aunt and then I spent every sick day with Bob. Yeah, isn't that something? I don't think I watched the show after. I did try to audition for other game shows because I thought it was kind of interesting. I was, I, you know, I felt like if you want to meet certain people that do the game shows, you know, audition to do the game show. I never got picked for any of the others, but uh, but I was kind of wanting to meet, you know, I, and I never did Jeopardy. I had a friend that I kept saying, will you get on Jeopardy? Because there wasn't a question that seemed to be one she didn't know. Now, I know that's kind of ridiculous. You know, you always edify your friends. But I remember we would sit and she would just answer and answer and answer. And I was like, I was not for that show. You know, I was not for that show. Who is Bob Barker? Uh, uh, who is, you know, you always had to, and you know, you always answer it with a question. I really love watching those brainiacs on that show. If I ever get to see it, but I watched it with my friend when I was younger and just said, this is not the show for me. So I never auditioned for that one, but I did audition for match game. I think I wanted to be on Hollywood squares for a while. They were going to put the chickens on Hollywood squares, but it takes four puppeteers to do two chickens. And they were kind of like, we don't know if the box is big enough, but we sure wanted to try it. Uh, I think it would have been fun to have the foster farms chickens in one of the boxes for the for the Hollywood Squares. I love the Hollywood Squares. That is one that I would watch on occasion. If I if of any game show, I think it was the one I kind of. And then what is it? The Pyramid. I can't remember the Pyramid one, but uh, I would catch that one every so often if my mom was watching it. So there you go. <laughs> Isn't it funny we segue into game shows? Kind of funny, but uh, I love Sherry Lewis. I actually have a small collection of Sherry Lewis puppets, which includes a prop from Lamb Chop's Play Along. How nice! So one of my stories is I built a Lamb Chop. Watching Sherry Lewis, I recreated Lamb Chop to be my confidant when I was being bullied. Puppets are such a lovely confidant. And uh, uh, Lamb Chop was mine to begin with. And that was my window into puppetry. 
Yeah, Sherry. Then later I got to meet audition for Sherry Lewis um, at her home in Hollywood, which was really fun. You, it, There's nothing like walking in the door of uh, Sherry Lewis's home and seeing 11 Emmys uh, line her, forgive me, <laughs> line her fireplace. <laughs> But uh, I sang with her. My my mentor, Pat Brimer, was her literally her right hand man. He built the puppets for her, and he um, he was with her daughter Star. I think was her daughter's name. I could have that wrong. But Sherry Lewis's daughter and Sherry Lewis mostly worked out of Canada. But uh, but Pat Brimer was her right hand man, and she needed a third. And uh, I auditioned for her. She was impressed, but my hand was a bit too big. So she went with another puppeteer. But but then throughout, after that, because I knew Pat, she knew Pat, and therefore I knew Sherry, would come and see my other puppet shows that I did. One of the ones she really enjoyed was Puzzle Place. I did Puzzle Place for KCET. I played a little, um, I played a little artist kid. You know, that's all the cute little kids that came together. Um, various eclectic backgrounds. They were really sweet and cute. And I played uh, a little artist character, <laughs> big reach, right? But uh, I played her, also assisted a lot of the people in that. And that's where I got to know Noel McNeil, the big, the bear in the big blue house, and, uh, and many of the other people who are still doing Sesame Street today and working on current Muppet stuff. So um, I see them all. I see them when I see them. And it's like an old friend, you know, so... It's cool. Yeah. But good for you. Yes. Awesome. I'm just like you. Crumpet Puppet Troop. Love, love, loved her. Didn't we? Mm -hmm. um, David says, hi, Terry. I made it. I joined the tribe. David, you did. Uh, did you ask to be on the private Facebook place? Please do that. And if you didn't get my email that gave you a link, please go to the to private Facebook page and ask to be a part of it. And also, David, you should have gotten a message through the tribe that tonight is a Zoom call. Love to have you on it. Yes. So isn't that nice of David Lewis to talk about joining the tribe? That just was the perfect segue for me to invite you to join the tribe. There we are. Patreon.com slash Terry Harden. Go there for $5 a month. That's basically put a jar by your doorway, drop a quarter in it every day, You'll have your $5 a month. We charge that. I charge that. There's no we, no mouse in my pocket. I do that so I have skin in the game. So I hope you will consider joining us. Your voice needs to be heard. It's a great group of people, but there's a qualifier and that's the $5 a month. So I hope it's not much, but you must be a part of the qualifier to join. So I hope you will consider it. I'd love to hear your voice. And David, Holy hand grenade, I am so happy that you did. I am so touched and so thrilled that you did, David. Uh, that really, really, because uh, uh, I know you were thinking about it for quite some time, and uh, uh, I'm really glad that you did. I am um, looking to make sure that I get to the right. There he is. So here it is again, David saying he made it and joined the tribe. Uh, I'm so excited to see you and I hope you can join our Zoom call tonight. I will send a reminder out about six o'clock tonight, but it's at 630. Yes. So um, I hope you'll join us uh, live on Zoom. I'd love to. I know the whole tribe would love to meet you and uh, I'm very excited to see you. Um, a thousand thanks. And I'm so glad you joined. Uh, I love watching other artists uh, world that always great to see how other people's creative process works. Yes. And, uh, uh, it's no different in the tribe. Uh, I, I do a bit of that. I am going to do more. I'm just working to catch up from the pandemic, from the pandemic, if you can believe this guys, uh, during the pandemic, I got a lot of commission work and then I had to take a hiatus from my work to take care of my father who I'm still, uh, overseeing and looking after. Um, but it's a little bit less frantic right now because I finally got him in a, in a, in a, in a place where I can kind of just trust the doctors because they're really good. And, um, they're really dedicated 
Um, he's not in a weird place. He was in some weird places. Anyway, I won't involve you with all of that. Just know that that is why my phone for the last, what is it, two years has been on, um, on Audible because I usually have it on, you know, buzzing and uh, I can't because I, I have to be able to pick up immediately when the doctors call and I don't always know what the number's going to be. So I have to do what I don't like to do, which is to sometimes answer an unsolicited number. But uh, but luckily, most of the time, I've got it identified. But I have to be there because these doctors are so busy that they may not call me back right away. And these past few weeks, I've been sick um, and unable to go see my father because of this sinus thing and because of <clears throat> we don't believe it forgive me again. We don't believe it to be contagious, but my dad is very, very vulnerable right now. So the doctors have told me to stay away until I have no signs of this. And it's very frustrating because I want to go see him. One doctor FaceTimed with me and let me see my dad and talk to my dad, which was pretty cool. So everything's good. Okay. Enough uh, about that. But yeah, so as a result, there are higher tiers in my Patreon page and other things I want to show and teach you. I just need to get my list of commissions honed down into the people that have been patient and enough to wait for me to get that stuff done. Bless your hearts, uh, being people who have asked me to do some work, some private sculpting for you or or painting for you or whatever. And thank you for your patience because it's, it's, it's been, it, it, I don't know what happened. People found me during the pandemic and I won't apologize for it. I was grateful, thrilled to have so much work, but I still have more, including the Rolly Crump chest set. So that's what I'm working on now. Cause I'd really like to launch it sometime in October, uh, the presale. So I'm, I'm looking to get out there and get my, myself back to work. So fingers crossed, have a few other things, a couple other things that came across the the pond that I got to get together too. So um, do it. And of course the book is coming out. The, uh, the, the next book next to the children's book uh, that my friend and colleague Lena Eklund did. I did the line art for called uh, whispering corn and uh, it's in pre-sale until September 15th. And I'll give you more on that. But if you want to reach out to me via message there and just tell me you want one, it's $18 during the pre-sale after that 20. Uh, still reasonable, hardback, gorgeous, beautiful, but uh, we'll deliver around October 1st. Mm -hmm. But uh, just let me know if you want one and I'll put you on the list. It's just uh, so that I know how many uh, want the book. So I'm kind of asking you to do that. But as, as soon as I get it up in my store, I will, you know, call and uh, I will give a shout out here on this channel and I'll give you a shout out on my, on my tribe channel, uh, my Patreon page. And just about anywhere else, I can say, hey, hey, hey. And uh, then I'll let you know where I'm going to be in case you want to say that save shipping. Because I may be in some areas near you. And if you want to come down and see me live and in person, then you can do that and pick up your book. So uh, more on that later. Yeah, see? Comes comes from other people's creative process work. You guys just trigger everything. My dad drove a truck a few years ago that still had a cassette player. It didn't work though. Kind of a bummer though. Cassettes are something. You always had to put a pencil inside the, it, you know, two little wheels. You had to do it to tighten the tape inside that was a quarter inch. You had to make sure it was tight because if you didn't make sure if there was any kind of slack in the cassette, it could get stuck in the machine and you'd eject the cassette and then it would be like the, the, the tape was still <laughs> stuck in the machine. Always a drag. Same with VHS players. You can have that too. So you always want to make sure everything in the, in the VHS players though, they have that little door on the VHS. So uh, it could stay mostly tight 90% of the time, but you don't keep those machines clean and stuff. Sometimes it would just eat your tape and that was so annoying. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, I don't have a cassette player anymore that works. I do have a, I don't know if I still have it actually. I got a cassette of big songs. Forgive me, forgive my yawning. It's because of my, my air. <laughs> but uh, big songs, Dinosaurs Big Songs released a DVD and a cassette. And I had both of them, but I may have given it to the tribe. We do uh, opportunity drawings for the tribe just as a little gift. 
helps me clean up my garage and it gets to, goes to people that know how to love and take care of things that touch them. So a lot of people in Terry's tribe will tell me what they love and what they want. And if I find it, I just, a lot of times we'll just send it to them. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's, it's great for your, your, your items that you loved for a long time going to people who will take care of them, not just some eBayer who's going to, you know, sell them to whoever, you know, no offense if you're an eBayer, but uh, a lot of times you don't know if the heart is in the eBayer selling it or not. Yep. Late getting on, says Bob Lina Weaver. Good morning and happy Monday, everyone. Are you back in town? Master Bob, tonight is a Zoom call for the tribe, so I hope you'll join us. Uh, for me, I've got very, I've got a very mixed toy and plush collection. Don't we all? I mean, don't we all? Crumpet Puppet Troop. I mean, take a look at this beauty given to me. I mean, is this more cute? Now, do I need this? The answer is absolutely no. But do I love this? I mean, this is a laying down, sleeping stitch. And I absolutely think he's adorable. You know, isn't he cute? You know, he's already, he's he's puppet material too, isn't he? Because, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> See, everything's a puppet with me. But this is such a lovely plush. Every once in a while, I'll come to my studio and hug it. Do I need him? But I absolutely love him. I want him either. I think I want him at Bingo with my Chalk Walk team. Um, and uh, I just can't part with him. I've tried. I honestly have tried, but I just can't. And then the tribe sends me cool stuff like this little fella. I'm a big fan of Rocket Raccoon from Guardians of the Galaxy and my friend and team person of Patreon, Evan gave me this guy and he's super soft and plush, but he is a stuffed animal. This was for my birthday and he has really, you know, those cute little eyes that they make now, those cloth eyes, legs move and everything. Paws are so, kind of sewn to his body, but that can be easily re rectified if I ever wanted to make him a little puppet, but he really is super soft and lovely. And he just stares at me from over here. So um, he's often supporting me and saying, you know, I got your back, Terry, just like Rocket Raccoon does. I love Rocket Raccoon. I think he's just a cool character. Very, very touched by him. Yeah. Yeah. So like you, I have a lot of, of, of plush, too. Here's a Sensi Buddy. I didn't even know what a Sensi Buddy is, but Tigger is my name, sis. Uh, I've been a Tigger since I was about two because we're bouncy, 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 bouncy. And uh, this particular little, little Tigger has a, a scent packs that go in his back. I hadn't even heard of that, but won him at a bingo thing. But isn't he cute? He really is puppet material, you see? See, he even agrees. He even agrees. Yeah, right? Yeah, I know. You love me, don't you? Yeah, I know. See? So, yep. So, uh, like you, Crumpet Puppet Troop, Everything's a puppet and it's plush and toys. Yeah. What kind of toy could I show you? Uh, well, it's not a toy, but uh, this is uh, something that I grabbed um, when I was at the birthday. And I absolutely, I'm not a puppet, uh, a popcorn bucket collector, but I do love this. And this is going to someone in my tribe as well. Um, a lot of times I'm grabbing things. I go, ooh, that would be good for the tribe. Ooh, that would be good for Terry's tribe. So um, that's a that's that's something as well. You just never know what you're going to come across. And so, like you guys, I like the toys and the stuff as well. I mean, I I have to be honest. Um, um, it is you know right down to some of the cutest things like like this right here. This is a door Dory Kleenex pack that I thought was super cute. So um, Kleenex made it and it's got Dory and, you know, who doesn't love that little face? Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, absolutely, guys. Um, and uh, what else have I got here? I can show you really quickly. This is kind of fun. This is a greetings card when I was doing Baby Sinclair. Um, Kevin helped me with that. So me sitting next and giving a wild face while I'm doing the hands and Kevin Clash is doing the, the baby. So there's that. Fun, huh? Yep. 
yep, all that stuff ends up being something that could easily be in the um, giveaway. Yep, 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 there it is. Thank you for, for triggering that. Crumpet Puppet Troop. That's That's been really lovely and fun. I collect mostly puppet-related stuff, Muppets, Alf, Lamb Chop, etc., but also Wild Things and Dr. Seuss characters. I think, like I said before, uh, anyone, anything can become a puppet. So be careful because uh, it's good that you, you, you localize it. You know what I mean? Um, once you say, oh, anything can be a puppet, danger, 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 danger. That's how I got in trouble in the first place. So uh, good for you for honing it down to Muppets, et cetera, et cetera. So did you do the, uh, did you guys do this? Let me, let me pull this down because I fell in love with this. You know, some things, even when you're not supposed to collect, you collect. And so let me carefully do this because I don't want you to not see what I did here. I hope I can show it to you because this is something, if you get the chance to do, you may want to do. Uh, if you can, this is the, um, I'll try not to get too much glare on it, but uh, this is the Lego Muppets. So you get the Muppet, you guys probably collected this. Um, if you like Muppets, you collected the Lego Muppet characters, which are the one, but see the marquee that it's in. So you can download, <clears throat> you can download how to build this marquee. And then I put it in this nice case so that you have the nice case and it shows off all of their little accessories and stuff and it's hanging here in my office. So I'm not completely, because being a Muppeteer, still am by the way, they could call you at any time. That's why they put you on the shelf like these guys. You never know when they're gonna say, hey Terry, why don't you come work with us? You never know. So, uh, you know, I'm excited and ready and, and fired up for it. But uh, the point is that, uh, uh, this is kind of fun. You get these Lego characters. You probably did, uh, Crumpet Puppet Troop. But I didn't know if you knew you could do the little marquee like the show had. I built this and then put it in this nice uh, display case. But uh, if you have trouble finding the instructions or following the instructions, give me a shout because, again, there we go. I just had to slowly set it back up on my on my thing. Because again, in the tribe, we have Lego people. So those Lego people help us refine some of the instructions that we get about building certain things. So um, if the instructions are like, what the heck are they telling me how to build, which is what I went through, then some of the people in the tribe uh, uh, will redo them for me and let me up. And they're fabulous, 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 fabulous. So great. So yeah, I, I think I told you guys that I got back into Lego building the Titanic. So uh, the Titanic is really something nice and um, and cool. So uh, it took me a while. I got it for Christmas a couple of years ago, and I absolutely adored building it. And it's up here in my office, too, and I love it, love it, love it. So, um, yeah, so I've got some Muppet things because I am a Muppeteer and of course I like it. I also have a few things that, uh, if I decide to get part with them, I'll get with you Muppet people more so on the tribe. Uh, I got a lot of Christmas cards, a lot of invitations, a lot of things like that from Jim Henson because I am a Muppeteer. So I got, Jim sent me a set, uh, when the stamps of the Muppets came out, he sent me a special frame set as a gift. So um, his team, Brian Henson, but the Henson Company, sent me a lot of cool things. And if you want me to show those to you sometime, um, I'll dig them up and uh, show you a couple of things that they, they gave me, including, I think I still have, I may have, I don't remember if I got rid of it, or I still have it, uh, Amphibia, that special cologne. Did you hear about this, uh, guys who love Muppets? Amphibia, that special cologne. Um, featuring Kermit the Frog, and it has a towel that comes with it. So you get the cologne, amphibia cologne, in a beautiful box, and then in the box is a towel of of, of Kermit, you know, doing a sexy pose for his Miss Piggy lady. So there you go. Didn't know I was going to tell you all about the Muppets today. We could talk collectibles if you want, because there are some really fun ones if you dig, 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 dig. Uh-oh, Snow White reference. 
<laughs> I can't remember which show it was, but did you know there was a game show in the 70s that shared the same studio space as Semi Sesame Street for a while? No, 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 no. I did not know this because that would be New York, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know this. I don't know the game show either. But uh, hey, LOL, that's me. <laughs> I remember something that happened like seven years ago, but don't remember where I put my wallet five seconds ago. Exactly. And you're like, what the? I know, you know, and the thing that's most frustrating about that, I got to talk to you about this here too, is you know you put it there and it's not there. And you go, I know I put it here. Or you remember doing something and then you didn't do it. I got to tell you, crazy stuff, crazy stuff, crazy, crazy stuff. My father had had and still has at least 30 or 40 of the old Star Wars figures from the 80s. Some of them kept in a box while others got played with and destroyed by me and my siblings. <laughs> well, if he has the, let me get this right. If he has the Jawa on card in the plastic cape, it's worth a lot of money. It's one of the, it's from 1977. So don't go looking at your new ones, but this one is very valuable. I did just like you did as I pulled it out and it was very valuable out too, but not as valuable as on card because as a kid, I played with my toys. I wanted to put them all in the uh, Star Wars, uh, you know, the Star Wars uh, collector's box carrier. And I had it and I labeled it and made sure each one was in there. Very beautiful. They were pristine. They just weren't on card. And if they're on card, they're worth more money as we all know to collecting toys today. So rats. But I did well with my collection. My collection sold for six figures and I took my husband to Tokyo for uh, a month. Uh, just really, uh, we flew in and we went to the very top of Tokyo and toured all the way down, finishing up by seeing my Splash Mountain design that I did. I, I worked on Splash Mountain Tokyo as an Imagineer and got to do the main drop. So we went to see that. And uh, Tokyo was amazing 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 we saw disney seas and i couldn't get my husband out of there so it's fun welcome to terry's tribe david yeah that a girl diane joe penny says guta duta solo soft vigile yes uh nantika yes exactly jaba jaba wa ninchi kosha uh anyway there you go he's spelling it out right i never would have spelled it i just said it so um, that is exactly right, Joe. And that's what got me on the show, I guess. <laughs> this girl's nuts. Let's put her on the stage. Uh, Bob got close to one. Bob got close to 100 without going over. Yeah. <laughs> oh, are you clever, Jamie? You watch the show. Oh, my gosh. That's very good. That's very good. I wish I had put that in the title. Wow. Very clever. See? She's part of the tribe, too. <laughs> Oops, missed a word. <laughs> well done, Jamie. Didn't do anything for Cinema Day, but have tickets for Saturday for a double feature of HP and Deathly Hallows Parts 1 and 2 for Back to Hogwarts Day. Wow. So for a double feature of Harry Potter and the Destiny Hallows parts one and two for Back to Hogwarts Day. Good for you, Jamie, because I don't know if you read in the read in the latest uh, postings. I get uh, there's really no newspapers anymore, even though when I want read them online, I think I'm reading the paper. But uh, uh, they said that young kids don't know who Harry Potter even is nowadays. That, I find it really surprising to me that uh, there are young kids that don't know that because I'll tell you, there's young kids who know Star Wars. Oh, boy. And young kids who know Ghostbusters. So what are you going to do? Harry Potter, what's up now, they say, because J.K. Rowling said some rather mean things and people are uh, picketing her, not picketing her, but uh, boycotting her. But I don't know if that's the case. Just, you know, front of mind. What's front of mind in the world, right? Good for you. Should have been. <laughs> I'm not even going to try. Okay. Okay. It's to my memory. So that's what I said. 
I didn't know you skated. I took lessons years ago and skated in one ice exhibition in Rydell's and a sparkly blue dress. Go for you, Michelle. Nervous as a cat. I never did it again. Too nerve wracking. And I loved Pickwick too. Yeah, Pickwick Ice is still there. It's really strange going there though, because the, you know, you used to be able to skate most of the day. There was one, my favorite skating rink was the Laurel Plaza. Uh, it was next to a May company. That's all history now gone. The earthquake hit it and they never rebuilt it. But that's where I took my lessons. Um, that's where I did ice dancing way before ice dancing became an Olympic sport. Uh, every time I watch it now, I start laughing because it's exactly what I did as a young person. Exactly. And they used to laugh at me and tell me that's never going to get anywhere. And now it's a sport. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Pickwick was the other rink. And then Iceland, Van Nuys Iceland, which is still around, was the was the third rink. I used to love the ice at Iceland, but they had plywood for the edges. Now I'm sure it's much more than plywood. But I used to think, boy, if you need a wall, you could go over into the arena, you know, into the bleachers because it was this wobbly <laughs> peeling. You get slivers. It was really a, a rundown rink. But now I hear it's 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 doing much better. But Pickwick, yeah, just got picked up by LA Kings and put their name to it. A lot of hockey training. Sunday nights is... Uh, Young hockey leagues training there and uh, and other leagues. It is the best place to get your skates sharpened, I'm learning. But it was, Pickwick Arena was the best place to get your shapes, your skates sharpened when I was a skater. I mean, my heyday skater, Michelle. Uh, that was where you did it. Spateri boot was the best boot. I was proud. I saved up all my money to have a Spateri boot. They've been stretched and reworked and stretched and reworked, according to the expert at Pickwick, who I visited yesterday, uh, said their stretching days are over and their blade days are over, which was a heartbreaker for me. So I had to set them aside and uh, learn about other skates. But what a heartbreaker. I'm excited to get back on the ice. Again, I was invited. He invited me as well. Told me best to buy the tickets online. $17 for only an hour and a half of skating. What the... And, and if you go, if you just show up, it's $22. So they really want you to buy the tickets online because uh, I guess they don't want to be bothered down there. There's also uh, the skate shop of old Pickwick when I was buying my Spiteri Brute and my special blades that were then attached separately. Now they sell the skate and the blade together. That's the norm. You can have different blades if you get up into the $1,000 range of blade and scape. Like I said, you better be an Olympian if you're going to spend that kind of money. Not necessary for the average Joe or the intermediate average Joe like myself. Um, but they don't have boots in there for you to try on. In the day of my day when I got my Spateri boots, they fit me. They put the boot on. We chose the blade chose the toe pick, chose all of that, and then they put them together, and I had my skates. Now what they do is send you to Amazon. Isn't that something? I was shocked when I heard it, but he measured my feet properly and uh, gave me his advice. It was, and when we then we reminisced about the days of old when Spateri was a company that was really formidable, as were the Rydales, and uh, both are not worth their name they're written on now. Most skaters will tell you the ones they want are the Jackson line. Um, I think that's the main line right now. Um, yeah, there's another one. And, and, the, and the one that's like, the boot is like $800 for the pro, pro, pro skater. That boot has Swarovski crystals embedded in the side of the boot. And that's not optional. That, that you have to have. And I was kind of like, hmm. I don't want that. <laughs> I guess a lot of women would want that skate. And I could guess you could you could get the black boot, which is usually considered the men boot. You could get the black boot if you wanted to. But I always loved a nice white boot for my ice skate. So I learned a lot. And they also have this this new boot that's eight eight hundred bucks ish. Is light. It's made out of a combination of leather and um, alloy and L, 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 uh, uh, um, composite, composite and leather. 
you know, like when you have a tent, it's made out of composite. So it's a strong material, but it makes the boot really light. And then the blade is really wild. I should have taken a picture so I could show you because Michelle, you'd be blown away at the way these blades look now. Um, they're very kind of, oh, they're, it was a really strange blade. Uh, the blade itself was fine, but the way it attached to the boot and everything, I was like, wow. You know, so I know I'm talking about some things you may or may not be interested in, but it's really interesting to see skates because my sister was an Olympic hopeful. She trained with Peggy Fleming during the days of Peggy Fleming. If that's not a name that's familiar to you in ice skating, look it up. But because uh, you'll you'll know Peggy Fleming once you look her up. So that's not in a mean way. Look her up, but look her up because uh, that's how you're best going to know about her. But she helped my sister. And then when my sister got to high school, she just hung up her skates and decided she'd rather have a life in high school than to be an Olympic champion. Now I think she kind of wishes maybe she had gone that route. You know, sometimes we take a turn on the road and we think it's really cool. And then later we go, uh, maybe we should have, maybe we should have, what would have happened if I had taken that road? Um, she was an uh, unbelievable skater. She's a very beautiful skater. And uh, she, she came into ice skating at the right time where she came in at seven when I came in at 11, 10, 10, we're three years apart. So I was 10 and the teachers would say, no, she's not Olympic material because her long bones are growing. You know, 10, 11, 12, your long bones grow and you're kind of like an albatross in anything you do. Your running looks like an albatross bird. You know, that bird that has trouble landing. And yeah, you're kind of flailing. Me on the ice was the same. But once I got my feet under me, I ice danced and realized I didn't want to do all the hard work that Olympic skaters did. My sister was there six o'clock in the morning doing figures you know, tracing the eight, which I thought was absolutely why. Why is this important? Um, there must be a reason. But uh, I didn't see it as a 10-year-old and an 11-year-old. I just liked being able to fool around and ice dance and loved it. In fact, during the 1971 earthquake, my sister was on the ice practicing when that earthquake happened. I was in bed sleeping and she was practicing and the roof started to fall down. Yeah, she, um, she skated. She was fine, but yeah, can you imagine? Yeah, that was at that was at uh, the May Company, Laurel Plaza in North Hollywood. Yep. Oh, the stories we remember. But Pickwick, I still love it. I'm really glad to hear the ice is still there. I was very happy the Kings added their name to it. Uh, the guy there was telling me all about it and how that it happened. But the bowling alley, unfortunately, the bowling alley's last day was yesterday. So boohoo for that. That's really sad. Joe, I used to roller skate with my sister in 77 and 78 in Costa Mesa. Every Saturday, we were at the rink, taking lessons and staying afterwards for the general afternoon skate session. Certain popular songs from that time are connected to my memory with skating, including the Miko Star Ears Cantina Band single. Yeah, yeah. You remember that? That, that uh, Maybe not. You don't remember. The one that goes, ba, 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. That one, skate music at, at the May Company, at the Laurel Canyon, at the Laurel, at the Laurel Plaza Mall, that ice rink. Always played that one. Ba, 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 ba. And then the Carpenters were a big favorite. Uh, um, they always played the Carpenters. Yeah, once in a while they'd play something a little more upbeat, but most of it was, yeah, very interesting. Joe. Yes, the music will take you right back, won't it? Yeah. Uh, Star Wars, not ears. Yeesh, fat fingers. Oh, okay, so let's go back to your comment. Um, the Star Wars, okay. The dun-dun-dun-dun, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were making a Disney comment. I'm glad you corrected that, Joe. It's human here, yeah, but it's not crazy human. Okay, well, that's good. Then pick it for me, will you? I'd appreciate it. I've never heard of that. I'll have to look it up. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. You will enjoy finding out about it. And if I still have it, I will show it to you. But I may have moved it. I've paid it forward, so I don't know. Yeah, that's really dumb, he says. Can't, can't, can't you get fired from Disney if you badmouth them publicly? Someone who worked for them told me, that a while back. You'd think so. So you wonder why Rachel isn't being jettisoned. 
I know that there was talk from some websites, um, I mean, some some YouTube channels that said she had been. But I've learned from my Terry's tribe, the people that are really in the know about YouTube, that there's things called clickbait and a person will bait you with something. So you click on it and then they'll tell you something else. It's not really true. You know, and I was I'm trying to determine what's clickbait and what's not. Many people in Terry's tribe will tell you what YouTube channels are ones to avoid uh, because they always are clickbait. So again, it's the knowledge of people in Terry's tribe that makes it so wonderful, but the people are just fantastic there. It's, you know, I started it because I thought people might want to know what's going on with me and everything like that. You know, that's what I was told when I was creating my, my, my page, but it's, it's not the case. It's, it, I'm finding that the real Ben, the real success of, of, of Terry's tribe and my Patreon page is the community is the people within it not just me, but the people that I've brought to it and have encouraged to join it. So I'm quite thrilled about that. Joe says, Bob Iger is no Walt Disney. This is true. Different criteria, different goals, doesn't he? Yep. Uh, Joe says, I used to have a whole bunch of cassettes, but they're all gone now, lost in moving or moved on to people who collect cassettes. I used to have one of those cool bags full of cassettes. And I gave it away to someone who collected cassettes. I think I sold it to him, but, you know, it had Vivaldi and it had, oh, it had all kinds of cool stuff. What time tonight, says Linda, 630. It will be announced on the Patreon page and our private Facebook page. Indeed, it will, Linda. So that's a cute stitch. I love him, right? Does it, isn't he puppet material? And you should, I mean, not to be rude, but he has the softest feel to him. I think that's why every time I pick him up and think I'm going to give it to a kid or something, it goes back with me because I can't let go of him. It's too difficult. <laughs> I have that plushie, but it's a poo in PJs. Love it so much. Is it as soft and cuddly? Yeah, I'm sure it is. And you cannot let them go. When, when I was feeling kind of blah, you know, with all of this, I just cuddle him and he makes me feel better. He's like, just keep just keep swimming, Terry. You're going to get better. Even though I'm sick and tired of this happening in here, I'm ready for it to be over. It makes me too sleepy. Yes, we are back and getting back into the routine. I am hoping to meet tonight at least for a little bit. Yay. I'd love to see you. See how I just fix it. If spell check messes with him. I have a figment pillar. Yeah. See, it's hard to let go of those super soft, comfy, yummy, yummy, yummy fabric. That's a great fabric. And I also like that they kind of um, they kind of took some liberties. Like these patches are kind of smaller than I'm used to seeing on Stitch. He usually has them bigger, um, but it's cute. And then the belly is usually a little smaller, but I like the big belly. I just think it's just a great shape. And he's so huggable that you just, you just go like this all the time. You just go, oh my God, I love it. You want to just be like him, you know, if his face is like this and you're like this and you go, you know, so yeah. Oh, he's just too cute. He's too fun. You want to cuddle him every time you move. Tigger, I still have my Tigger plush that was given to me when I was three. I'm a huge Winnie the Pooh fan. Yeah, well, uh, I have another story for you of another time. Remind me of how Tigger showed me where my first home was going to be that I bought. Yep, yep. He endorsed my first home. It's a very fun story. Oh, this is my cousin. Let me tell my cousin, can I call you later? There you go. Because I'm broadcasting right now. Everybody in my family knows I broadcast at this time, but they all forget. What were we saying, Crumpet Puppet Troop, about the keys <laughs> and <laughs> your wallet? <laughs> my family cannot remember when I'm broadcasting, even though I do it every, the same time, every Monday and Friday. But, you know, that's the way it is. Yep, you got it. Uh, oh, wow. I should try that. I have all the Lego Muppets. Yeah. And all you have to do is Google the marquee. All right. Um, there's lots of Lego people out there that uh, do it because they're makers. They don't sell it to you or anything. But if you have trouble building it, Crumpet Puppet Troop, um, um, reach out to me, like message me 
and I'll send you my revised instructions uh, that were done by one of my my tribe because that's why the tribe tribe has all kinds of benefits. I love talking about collectibles. Yeah, they're fun, huh? We've got so many. There's so many wonderful collectibles in the world. What else would be cool? Oh, well, this one. I'm a fan of the queen, so I have the queen. Uh, her bear, see? Isn't that fun? Yeah, this is great. Queen Elizabeth. I just love the whole fantasy of the queen. This is really a nice bear. This is a stife bear. And it... Um, it... Um, has this on the side i just love this bear it has that in the front it has posable legs it's a very cute bear stiff as a board bear but it's a very cute bear you know it's a stite it's a yeah it's a great bear yeah me love this bear me love this bear anyway collectibles are so cool yeah yeah love them I'm right with you. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, speaking of Tokyo, Tokyo Disneyland is the least expensive of all the Disneyland parks, roughly $60 per day. I did not know that, Joe, but it sure is a beautiful park. A must-see. Also, it has all the hotels on the monorail line. So if you don't want to stay at a Disneyland hotel, you can still stay at a Hilton or a Marriott, save some money, eh, eh, hack, hack, and um, catch the monorail to get to Disneyland. So uh, if you'd rather spend your money on souvenirs and go visit these beautiful hotels, you could do that in Tokyo. Fantastic fun. Um, that song at the May Company rink was This Guy's In Love With You. Thank you, Michelle. I knew if I hummed it, you would have the title. Me and music. There we go. So my cousin said, okie dokie. Let me just tap that and put a smile. Boop. Smiley face. Like I said, my cousin does not remember that I have a... Uh, uh, aha. Okay. All right. Cool. All right, guys. So, yeah. Where was I? Thank you for that. Hi, Terry. How are you today? Hi, Mike. I did watch Presses Right after Card Sharks. And the announcer says, this is CBS. Exactly. Well done. Well done. Well done. Plus the ABC, right? Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, yeah. And the peacock, which I always loved. I always loved the older peacock, go, The one that used to fluff its feathers and it had like the paint drop top for the feathers. Love that one. Yeah, I love that one a lot. You need some Star Wars and Disney ringtones. I have Lost in Space. I don't do Star Wars because everybody seems to have stuff like that, you know, so I want a different one. So my Lost in Space is very unique. I just haven't used it in a while. I've kind of kept it kind of basic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, everybody, let's see who else. What do we got? Peacock is NBC. Exactly. NBC. ABC is boom, boom, boom. Right. And and ABC, the Peacock, is the one that goes way back when. In fact, you can see it on the old. The, the classic original Leonard Nimoy and uh, Bill Shatner, uh, it's on um, the uh, those Star Treks. Yeah, that's the one I like. That's my favorite peacock. Just so you know. Yep, yep, yep. All right, guys. Hey, 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 what a fun day today. We talked about an eclectic amount. Those of you who are just joining me or those of you who are joining me not live and you're wondering what the heck is this channel about? It's Terry TV. And basically whatever's on Terry, that's me, is mine. I'm going to talk about it. You can always post in the comments and chat with me and send me on various roads to various stories that might be locked inside my brain. So if you find this exciting and fun, subscribe. If not, I understand. Um, and those of you who really want the full immersion, please consider and do consider joining my Patreon page, Terry's Tribe, patreon.com slash Terry Harden. All right, guys, here we go. NBC, three no tone, the notes GEC, which represents the GE company. Isn't it nice to have people that know all this stuff and keep that in their heads? I'm going to say to Jamie, okay. <laughs> you go, Jamie girl, you go. All right, guys. 
do something nice for someone else. It'll make you feel a whole lot better. Are you any of you out there asking me why I say this? This is because in this world right now, it's very easy for some of you to feel depressed and lost and overwhelmed. I want you to know that if you do something for someone, a good deed for someone, something kind, a kind word, buy them a coffee, just say something nice, call someone you haven't called in a while, um, reach out and, uh, and make their day better. And you're going to find, just like the Grinch, your heart is going to feel bigger and better and start to heal. So that's one way, if you're in this saddened state, to feel better. So uh, that's why I always say, do something nice for someone else. It'll make you feel a whole lot better. Did I need to explain it? Not really, but I thought I would. All right, guys. See you Friday. Be well. Be safe. Talk soon. All right.